Hello everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood pastor, Pastor Chris Johnson, here at Christ King Lutheran Church. Um, this week we are getting ready for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and our passage is again from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Um, the parable of the rich fool. And so let me go ahead and read this passage for you, then we'll uh, talk a little bit briefly. I'll talk a little briefly about some of the things going on here in this passage and, and where uh, some interpretive possibilities are. Um, it's just a very provocative passage. And so let me go ahead and read this for you. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. St. Luke writes, Someone in the crowd said to him, Jesus, Teacher, Tell my brother to, to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? He said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose? will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. The Gospel of our Lord. This passage is so provocative because it speaks of an issue which affects us all, and that is the issue of wealth, of money, of greed. And certainly in, in the United States of America, we live in one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And so we should feel a bit of sting from a passage like this. Uh, when we have an old, older car that might not be working as well as it should, it's quite easy for a number of us to go and get a newer, better model. Um, and so here in this passage, the rich fool in the parable is someone who's got very much and builds a new granary, a new barn, to fill in the harvest that has just uh, come. And so this passage is interesting on a number of levels. Um, if we're looking at it into its, in its own historical context, uh, those who had farming backgrounds would have immediately heard a, a number of possibilities in this passage. One of them is this man with this, uh, with all of this, food, all this great harvest, what's he supposed to do with, with, the, with the, um, the abundance that he has? And if, if he was going to be a good, upstanding member of society, well, then he should probably share it. And the fact that he doesn't share it but holds on to it for even longer is just a testament to uh, who this man is truly dedicated to. And this man in the parable is truly dedicated to him Self. And so not only has he covetousness, uh, not only is he greedy, but he's also very selfish, very prideful in trying to hoarding, in trying to hoard everything um, for himself. And so in, in a culture uh, that we live in, which is all about take care of me, myself, and I, uh, this is something we all need to be very careful of, of wanting more and more and more, um, of wanting more because when we get more stuff, we, we, we assume that we'll be, uh, we'll be happy, that the things that we have will provide us uh, with, with joy. Uh, you know, very popular nowadays is nostalgia and people like going back to their roots. Uh, and I remember seeing on Facebook the last week or so, some things popping up from my own youth. Uh, Nintendo re going to release a new... Um, Nintendo system with old with old games and the Sega Genesis going to be re-released uh, with old games and that harkens back to my childhood and it's kind of neat because well you know you grew up with that stuff but it's it's a cash grab and you're right these are things that I don't need these are things that really nobody needs and so uh, this passage gets us to truly think about what is it that truly makes us happy and content or as Jesus says what makes us rich towards God 
what is it that makes us rich towards God? At, at the end of this chapter, in chapter 12, um, Jesus talks about your treasure being where your heart is is that where you put your treasure your heart will follow and in this parable this rich fool he's putting all his wealth into more of his own wealth and his own personal security and um, not being rich towards God and certainly being rich towards God uh, can include giving away the abundance um, we as people of faith are called to be generous and to, to give generously of what God has generously provided us with. We are called to be good stewards of those gifts that he has given to us, whether that is um, time, uh, but certainly in this context, more, more specifically money. How do we use our money for the glory of God, but also how do we um, not misuse what we've been um, granted with. So one of the things I tend to talk about when it talks when we when we think about money and financial stewardship is it's important certainly what we give to support the work of the church that tie that ten percent or thereabouts, but how we use that other ninety percent is even more important because we could be giving ten percent to the church and then using the other ninety percent in God displeasing ways and very selfish ways and so how we use all that we have and all that we are for the glory of God is very very important I think that's what it means to be rich towards God that all that we have been blessed with how do we use that to glorify our Lord our Father in heaven how do we use it to lift up the work and the mission of the church and the propagation of the gospel there's a number of ways to be rich towards God, but I think those are those are a couple of them. Giving things away, um, our our favorite charities and things like that, but giving ourselves away in in love as well. And so this passage is uh, certainly going to be confronting all of us this weekend as we uh, live in a very affluent Western society. And so how we use what we have been graciously given is going to be key because what we use, what we, um, how we use what we've been blessed with says a lot about not only who we are, but also what we think of our God. Uh, if we're going to hoard everything, that means we're, we're, we're afraid that God won't provide for the next day. And as we know, what we just prayed last week um, from the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, we pray, when you pray, say, give us today our daily bread, that we, we know that God will provide for us. So why are we fearful? Why are we scared? Why is there anxiety over wealth and money? What, why are we worried about what the next day is going to bring when we have a generous, faithful God who will provide all we need from day to day? And so be rich towards God. It's all about priorities. It's all about using what we have and what we've been given for, for the glory of God. Um, these are just some uh, initial thoughts and, and considerations. I'm, you know, I've got a number of different th possibilities that I'm thinking about for preaching, um, but these are these are just some. And so uh, here's here are some things to think about. And so may you uh, may the Lord continue to bless you and guide you as you dig into this bit of scripture that really challenges us and how we think about wealth and monetary things uh, and possessions, but also how we uh, be rich towards God with, with what we have been graciously given. We are reminded in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that it's the love of money which is the root of all evil, but not wealth, not money itself. And so how we use these things for the glory of God, very, very important. So may God bless you. Until next time, we'll talk and pray and learn together. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.